Wait guys, hold on. I know you see this video is like 50 some minutes, but hold on, I'm gonna share something with you. It's kind of a secret, a lot of people don't know this yet. But if you go on YouTube and you go right down here to the settings, you can click on a speed and look at that, you can go 1.25, 1.5, or even two times the speed. Let's check out that. And uh, so here's a video I did this summer of me talking. And you, you want to get through a video a lot faster, this is what you do. Check it out. The purpose of that is to kind of promote this idea it's a little quiet. Of sharing the gospel of free events. What's up with that? Um, obviously, it's one of my passions. It's something I'm very passionate about for a lot of different reasons. Let's go to 1.25. But I, I just think that uh, the one thing I will say is that it really does help inspire Christians to go out there and share Two and a half. something that's totally lacking in the church today. It is totally it's lacking in the church today. And you, you know what? I'm going to talk about that a little bit in this video. So you might not want to do two times, that's probably a little bit too fast depending on your liking, but uh, if you want to get through a video faster, that's what you do. So this video I'm about to share, it was a Facebook post from just a tad bit over a year ago. It's a Facebook live video, the quality is not the greatest, that doesn't matter because it's just mostly the audio I want you to pay attention to anyway. Uh, towards the end, it does kind of cut out just a little bit in and out. Um, you can still understand what I'm trying to say the last like maybe 10 minutes, 5 minutes or whatever it is. I listened to it the other day. And uh, just please listen to this. I talk about doing parades. I talk about uh, some of my frustrations with the church and the lack of evangelism, the lack of concern for the lost, and maybe a couple of other things in there. But please listen to it. I think it's very important. And I'm trying to talk really fast right now to get through this part really fast. Like I'm, like I'm at uh, 1.5 times the speed right now, but I'm not. So, yeah, you guys want to get through a video a lot faster that's really long, that's what you can do. I do that a lot. I, I do a lot of YouTube, and if I don't have the time to sit through 20 minutes, Go to 1.2, 1.25, 1 1.5, whatever. It, especially if it's mostly a video that, uh, that you're just more concerned about listening to it. If it's uh, heavy on um, audio content. So there you go, guys. Enjoy this. Give me any feedback, please. I really enjoy feedback. Um, and that's it. So enjoy. Hey, guys. Just in the middle of... Preparing some gospel tracks for upcoming events in sharing the gospel. And I wanted to talk to you about that. So we have some parades coming up, holiday parades, Christmas parades. And you guys know me, I talk about this a lot. Why do I talk about parades so much? Obviously, as I keep reminding people, it's not the only way to share the gospel. But it is one way. And what I tell people is, why not? Why not take advantage of such an easy way to share the gospel? So what I'm doing right now, if you guys remember, I ordered 5,000 million dollar bill gospel tracks. I have three different kinds. They're all from uh, Track Planet. Not sure how well that's going to show up. Very thorough gospel message on the back. And then you have this one. Same thing. And then there is one more that's non-Christmas related. It's just the million dollar one standard thorough message on the back. So what I'm doing right now in preparing these gospel tracks is I bought myself a stamper. It's got my email address on there. Contact us at burdenoflovewisconsin at gmail.com. People can uh, email us, you know, if they want a question answered, objection answered, a free Bible, whatever it might be. So I'm stamping all of these up. I mix the tracks up, so it's going to be a little bit of a variety, a little bit of each of those three. And then um, what I'm thinking about is that after we're done with the parade, whatever parade we do, uh, if it's just like two people, me and Luke, what we're going to do is switch sides, run as far back to the beginning of the parade as we can, and then we've got something else to hand out. Let me show you guys. Talked about this before, but the exit movie flyers that I made up. Now, the exit movie is a movie dealing with suicide. It's from Ray Comfort. Very good production. Uh, it's a free 39-minute movie. Again, deals with suicide, but the gospel is presented, and that's the main thing. So, might save a life might save an eternal life, which is even better. Um, now, recently I made about, uh, let's see, 2,400 of these. 
I have a friend who used to own a uh, ink refill store, and um, he let me come over and print up as much as I could. I printed out 600 pages, which amounts to 2,400 once you cut them out into fours. So I've been working on cutting those out. Uh, me and my friend Luke have been working on that. So um, guys, you could really use help with this um, if you're local, if you, if you want to join us in doing any of these parades. I want to hit up uh, most likely Sheboygan, Sheboygan Falls. Those are on two different dates usually. Um, probably Appleton. And uh, I'm not really sure what other ones yet. Um, Maybe Manitowoc, not 100% on that one. The reason why is that Berean Fellowship, which is an awesome, awesome, fantastic church in town. It's one of the most highly recommended churches that you know, I can recommend people. Um, they have a float in the parade. They did last year as well. But one of the rules about the Manitowoc parade is that you cannot distribute stuff, you know, if you're in the parade, I guess. Um Maybe you can distribute candy, but I guess you can't distribute other things or whatever it might be. Uh, they were told that they can't distribute gospel tracts, I guess. So if we're going to do that, we have to um, do so in a way that doesn't look like that we're a part of that church. Um, I mean, they have gospel tracts. They have a, they literally have a vault, literally have a vault of gospel tracts, just countless of them. And, um, you know, they're they're awesome Awesome people. The pastor is such a great guy with a heart for the Lord. It's awesome. I love seeing that. It's, it's kind of rare. And um, But anyway, we could definitely use more people. But why do a parade event? I mean, Kurt, aren't people just going to throw those gospel tracts away? It's what a lot of people say. Well, there's a lot of problems with that. I'm probably not going to remember all the things I could address when uh, people bring that objection up. Um, people might throw them away. Okay, well, if you could have the opportunity to share the gospel with, let's just say, 5,000 people by speaking to them and being friendly or whatever, you know, whatever way that you think is, you know, the best way to share the gospel. I don't think there's a, you know, a best way per se, but let's just say that you can do it in the best way that you can conceive of if you use that as an objection. You know, well, we shouldn't share the gospel doing a, you know, handing out gospel tracts, whether it be a parade or anything. But guess what? When you share the gospel with somebody, they're going to throw it away, so to speak. Um, you know, for some people, it shouldn't go in one ear and out the other. If you understand what the Bible says about the heart of man, people who will, who will reject uh, the God of Scripture. You know, the Bible says that um, uh, preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who perish. That's in 1 Corinthians. You have to understand what the Bible says about unbelievers, unregenerate man. They hate the God of Scripture. That's what the Bible says. You can read that in Romans and just so many places in the Bible. Uh, so you have to understand that. Now, while sharing a, a gospel track with somebody just by, you know, a parade event or whatever, it's not... You know, personal. You're not talking with them. Um, I understand that, but guys, do not underestimate the power of the gospel track. Or rather, what God can do. He can do anything. Um, and and what's better, sitting at home, not getting the gospel out when thousands, millions, billions of people are going to hell, just shy of of uh, accepting. Um, what the Bible says, what they need to do to be saved. Is it better to sit at home and just do nothing while that's happening or to do all that you can? Sharing the gospel in the parade event is as easy as going for a walk. 99% of you guys can walk and extend your arm out and say, Merry Christmas or whatever, you know, Happy Fourth of July. Whatever it might be, you don't even have to say anything. People will still grab them. I mean, these go out like hotcakes. People will actually run you down for more. It's hap It happens like every parade. And maybe like one in 100 people might say, oh, no, thanks. I'm good. They might say that, but it's rare. And, ooh, somebody said no, no, thank you. 
it's fine, guys. Um, now, please understand, I'm not uh, being legalistic about this. I'm not trying to put a, some kind of a guilt trip on you if you do not um, do this or if you don't want to come out with us. It's, it's fine, okay? The option is there. I'm just extending uh, this invitation to you guys. We could really use help. I've got, like I said, 5,000 of these gospel tracts to hand out. A little, a little bit less than that because I've already used some of them for other things. And um, But we will have other gospel tracts as well, um, very likely. And uh, the exit movie flyers, man, it would be great if we could have like four people. Two of us will do um, the millions and then two people behind us um, several blocks then we'll hand those out. I just think it's neat to have just a little extra something. And um, again, the exit movie deals with a very serious topic, uh, especially something that's been going on, well, anywhere, really. I mean, it's, a, it's an epidemic, suicide, depression. Um, it's kind of a shame that there's been so few views on this movie. If you go to uh, Living Water's YouTube channel, there's only like just over 100,000 views, I believe it was. I just saw it a few minutes ago. Uh, it's kind of sad, but... You know, hopefully we can get that up there, but not for not for view's sake, but just that that's how many more people are going to be hearing the gospel message. So, um, and yeah, and we're not just going to use these exit movie flyers for parade events. We're going to use them for uh, door hanging. You know, just go out and hang them on doors. That was the original intent of them anyway. But I thought, well, let's just use them at, uh, during a parade event anyway for other cities. I'm not going to use them in Manitowoc because that's you know here I'm going to be handing those out or, you know, hanging them on doors and such. But, uh, yeah, other reasons why we should do parade events um, or why it's a good idea, why it's wise to do that. Um, well, like I said, I have 5,000 gospel checks. Guys, and I'm not sure why people don't get as excited about this as they really should, but you, just as one person, can literally get the gospel out to 500 people plus within 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever. Depends on your walking speed, um, how big the parade is. But most parades, they have thousands of people. Easily, you can get the gospel message into at least 500 hands. And you don't know how many other hands that's going to touch. So you give it to like you know some younger teen or child or something. And then the parents might read it or their friends might read it. They may hang on to it for a while. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I love these gospel tracks. I mean, this is not something that I would just like, oh, eh, Jesus junk, throw it away. I mean, some of them, yeah, sure, they'll do that. Again, some people will be like, oh, Kurt, come on, you're just going to throw it away. A piece of paper, come on. No, not all the time. And people do get saved from, God, from gospel tracks. God can save a person. It's the message. Okay, people get so riled up and uh, negative over the tactic that's used. And it's not a, a unbiblical tactic. I mean, there are some tactics, like um, uh, some churches will, speaking of the Westboro Baptist Church, which that's not Christian, but just as an example, maybe a, um inflated example, but, you know, they'll say, oh, fags are going to hell and just stuff like that. Well, the tactic is wrong, for one, and the message is wrong. But, you know, the tactic that we are employing, again, it's just one way, okay? I, I keep saying this because I've gotten a lot of trouble in the past, uh, especially with my old church. You know, we talk about all these different ways to share the gospel, and for whatever crazy reason they're upset, I don't really understand, but they start accusing me of, oh, Kurt, he's, you know, because we're not doing it his way, you know, his one way, then we're not sharing the gospel, and you know, we're sinful people or something like that. That's People have been saying that about me and about us who do this stuff locally here. And no matter how many times I correct them, and I've corrected them many times on that, they still say it afterwards. So there's this weird bitterness towards us, this weird hatred. I don't understand it. Um, and, and then people coming up or coming against us because we do parades. I don't understand. And when they do come against us for these things, they never... Give us an alternative. Oh, why don't you share the gospel this way or that way? They never do. They just come up against us. And I, I know I'm going on this long thing about that, but you know I've seen it many times on my Facebook. Somebody might say something, 
in the negative, you know, oh, people just going to throw it away. And it's weird because like, the people that like that comment, it's really telling. I mean, these people never say anything otherwise, never show any interest whatsoever in evangelism otherwise. You know, they come out of the woodwork and like this other person's comments, kind of like just blows, you know, punches to my heart. It's like, really? That's what you really thought about me all along? I mean, you're agreeing with this person and... You know, why can't, why are people not supportive of the gospel going out? Why can't people just be excited that the gospel is going out, that people are passionate? It's a long story, guys, but I got saved in the year 2000. Started going to church in 2003. There's a reason why for that. It's a long story. Um, basically, I had absolutely zero Christian influence for those three years. I knew no Christians whatsoever. Didn't even know, you know, how do I go to church? Do I need to sign up or whatever? I, I knew nothing, right? Um, but from 2003, get this, 2003 to 2013, it took 10 years. With minor, minor, minor exceptions, but 10 years of people knowing what my passion was in evangelism, 10 years to finally, finally find people who are passionate about it and who are actually doing it okay again minor exceptions but nobody discipled me nobody took me under their wing not just in evangelism but really anything Christian and that's you know something that the church locally and at large needs to work on I've seen some really godly examples of people uh, discipling younger people Older woman discipling younger younger woman, older men discipling younger men. Um, it's such a rare, super rare thing, but it needs to be done. Um, I know I'm getting kind of off topic, but yeah, people just get negative for such crazy reasons when it comes to sharing the gospel through parade events. But as I was saying before I went on this big thing, um, so one person, 500 gospel tracks, let's just say 500. Who wouldn't be excited about that? Um, and on top of that, guys, this is very encouraging. I mean, many of us will probably admit to, if we're going to be honest, the reason why we don't share the gospel is because we're afraid. Okay? Can we be humble enough to admit that? There's some kind of a fear problem. And we don't share the gospel. That's the thing. You know, we could just sit home and not share the gospel or we can just go for a walk and have the fellowship with other believers and just have the powerful encouragement knowing that you know you just share the gospel with hundreds of people or we can just sit home and uh, people are just going to throw it away anyway you know i'm not even going to pray for people who are doing this because you know i share these um all these different events going on about people sharing the gospel Nobody cares. Nobody says anything. Oh, but if it's a you know pastor going on some conference or whatever, then everybody's like, oh, pray for safe travels and and all this stuff. You know, we we adore our pastors so much um, for all their you know efforts and things that they do. But the the little you know peons, the the underlings, or I don't know what you want to what other word you want to use it for that. But you know we. The point is, why don't, why don't we care about the gospel going out? I don't know. But I know I keep coming back to that. Um, but yeah, hundreds of gospel, uh, gospel tracks you can get out easily. And it's exciting. There's no greater thrill than knowing that you are sharing the gospel with people, getting the gospel out there, even in such simple ways like this. I know it's not, you know, personal. Um, but guys, don't underestimate the humble gospel tract. But as I was saying, so many people don't share the gospel as is right now. Or it's like super, super, super rare. They might employ the, um, uh, what's it called, friendship evangelism method, which is neither friendly and most likely not evangelism. Of course, the, you know, depends what we're talking about here. You have to understand that. But it's like, oh, I'll, I'll friend uh, so-and-so, and then 10 years down the road, risking their eternity, putting that on the line, um, then, I'll, then I'll share the gospel once they see how different my life is. There's a lot of, 
I know it might come from a, 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 a right heart, I guess, but there's a lot wrong with that. Um, well, for one, who, <laughs> again, being humble, who can speak from experience? You're friends with somebody, and you don't share the gospel up front with them. You become friends with somebody, you don't share the gospel up front with them. Is it easier or harder to share the gospel with them one year down the road, two years, three years, and onward? Is it easier or harder? Come on, guys. Don't lie. You know it's a lot harder. All right? I'm sure nobody's probably even going to be watching this, but, <laughs> to, you know, at least people who are disinterested in evangelism. But, um, oh, man. Anyway, uh, doing a parade event, this will just encourage you so much. You're going to want to do more. I've shared a story many times before, but people that know me know I'm extremely shy, okay? Terrible social anxiety. If you know, most people don't know my life story. I should probably share it again sometime. Um, I'm not going to get into it now because it's just too long. I'm already at 19 minutes. But uh, I am probably the shyest person around. Ask anybody who grew up with me. They'll tell you. They'll tell you my what I was like in in school, um, being the the kid, the only kid in the entire school who did not speak to anybody, maybe the teachers. And it got a little bit better over the years, but um, you know, imagine. And I said I wasn't going to get into the story, but just to let me give you a teaser. Every single recess in elementary school, for example, with very few exceptions. I was standing by myself. I had no friends, no opportunity to develop a normal social life. And this affected me greatly through my entire life even now. It's really hard for me to communicate in groups of people. I don't know how to act. You know, I don't know how to be the guy who's always funny and telling jokes um, to make friends that way or whatever. That's why I'm socially awkward. Uh, if people realize that or not, I don't know. but. Um, I have huge social anxiety problems. I'm really shy. But doing a parade, I'm going to get back to that, in 2013, and I've done evangelism in other ways all that time until I finally met people in 2013. You know, believe me, but um, in 2013, I uh, did a, a parade event in, uh, let's see, where was it? Fond du Lac? Yeah, Fond du Lac. And wow. When I was done, when I was driving back to Appleton, because that's where my family was at the time, I just, it felt so awesome. I mean, I, we don't do this to, to feel, you know, great or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. But it was such an encouragement, because I was thinking, that was easy. I just, shy me, I just gave away 500 gospel tracts. I just shared the gospel with 500 people. That was easy. <laughs> I want to do more now and that's the key I want to take more baby steps now and I think it was later that same year I have to think about it for a little bit but that maybe that same year I finally started talking to people one on one strangers guys this is a huge milestone for a lot of us who have never shared the gospel before or you know once an extreme rare amount of time but the thing is, why can't we just be passionate about sharing the gospel again? That's what I really don't understand. I keep hearing how like the 80s, the 1980s, people were, entire churches were out sharing the gospel. Now, you have to twist arms just to get someone to, to go with you. It shouldn't be that way. But fortunately, that's what it is. I mean, Bible study after 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 Bible study times a hundred, two hundred, whatever. All these Bible studies talking about, you know, how we should live the Christian life, what we should be doing according to what the Bible says. And a lot of times we'll talk about evangelism. I mean, that's... One of the main reasons why we're here, right? Um, I have a pastor who's really excited about it. 
and God bless those people, pray for them. But the people, we sit there, we listen to it. We might be super excited about it. We might even nod our heads like, yep, pastor, that's such an awesome, incredible message. Yep, that's what I believe. Hallelujah. Oh, Packer game's on. Let's go watch that. And everything you just learned is dead. It's gone. Can't tell you how many times I've gotten out of the church service and we never talk about the, the message. It's just, it's done. That's 99% of all sermons I've ever heard in person at the church. It's just done. And let's be honest, guys. Who who talks about it afterwards? Really? Let's just be honest. Okay? Can we do that, please? Come on. You know it's true. But, you know, we might agree when, when the pastor talks about evangelism or our favorite show or guy on YouTube or whoever it might be book we read or whatever talk about evangelism oh yes that's that's such a great message we need to do that and then we never do here's an opportunity guys just an opportunity I, I would love to invite you even just for the fellowship guys now and another reason too uh, back at my old church um, <laughs> can get into some stuff but I don't want to get into too much trouble but uh, the pastor would teach a lot about how he believes that the um, disciples or well, the disciples are sent out two by two, so one can share the gospel and one can pray. Now, that's let's be fair; that's total speculation. The Bible doesn't say that. It's okay to okay, you can speculate that, but we can't declare that to be one hundred percent factual. It's just speculation based on really not much. Um, but whatever, okay. You know, I'm not talking, I'm not trying to say this to validate or invalidate uh, what he believes. I'm just pointing out that that's what he preached a lot, okay? The thing is, though, how come we're not practicing that? I mean, we can, we can all nod our heads like, yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, pretty profound there, you know, sending them out two by two so one can share and one can pray while the other one's sharing. The thing is, though, you know, as much as we might agree to that, you know, our favorite pastors, when they say that stuff, how come nobody wants to practice it? I don't know. Maybe I'm getting into the realm of arm twisting here, and I really don't want to do that, you guys. I know I'm kind of being in a negative tone tonight. I'm not trying to be. I'm just explaining to you what I've seen over the years and my experience and stuff like that. Um... If that's what we believe, that it's, you know, one person to pray, one person shares the gospel, we never had anybody just come out to pray. I would love that. If there are any prayers out there, even if you don't want to handle a single gospel tract, I would love for someone to come out just to be there with us. The fellowship is amazing, okay? It is so awesome to labor together for a common cause. You know, it, I'm not very much of a, a wordy person, um, you know, to, to be able to explain this in some great, profound, wordy way. You just have to be there to understand what I'm talking about. Uh, but if you're passionate about evangelism, and we all should be, which we're not, but we all should be, it should be easy for people just to come. Oh, can I, can I pray for you? I'll, I'll walk the parade route, and I'll pray for you silently or in my mind or whatever. And we can fellowship before and after and praise God for the victory of being able to have, to have the freedom to share the gospel. Um, but nobody ever uh, did that, came with us, even just for something like that. And well, I shouldn't say it like that, you know, just for something like that, because prayer is important. Uh, if Paul needed prayer, I bring this up a lot, but in Colossians, either, if, I think it's chapter 4 or 5, how many chapters are in Colossians? <laughs> it's either four or five, but um, the second verse or around there. If Paul needs prayer as he spreads the gospel, guess what? A little, you know, peon like me and and the others who are are doing this, we need prayer, okay? Um, <laughs> we definitely do. Trust us. You know, we just do. But anyway... Other reasons to share the gospel during a prayed event, and this is a humongous one. Bring your 
kids. Bring your kids when you share the gospel. Oh boy, I can go off on the humongous thing with this. A lot of the complaints that maybe atheists will have, atheists who grew up in Christian households, is that their parents never practiced it. They just went to church religiously. And based on all my experience and hundreds of atheists I've talked to and the experience of others, they'll tell you the same thing. A lot of Christians go to church just, that's just what they do on Sunday. Yeah, they'll, they'll say that they believe in it and all that. Um, but I think it was studies that say that only 6% of the so-called 90% of Christians in America, 6% of them have a biblical worldview. That's, <laughs> that's terrible. But anyway, we know that most Christians don't show that they're Christians outside those doors. Not in any real profound way. You know, outside of admitting if they were asked, are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, sure I am. You know, or that their lives are, you know, they're just a little bit nicer than maybe some other people. And that's it. That's pretty much as far as it goes. We're not passionate about Jesus. I'm not saying uh, we should be legalistic about this, what I'm, what I'm about to say. But Facebook is usually a kind of a good uh, litmus test, I guess you could say, about you know what are we most passionate about? What do we talk about a lot? Um, I know this is going to come off wrong and people are going to get mad at me, but I'm just going to say it. Nobody's talking about Jesus on Facebook, uh, people who are Christians. Very rarely. It might only be when there's a problem. This is the rescue 911 Jesus that a lot of the church believes in. When there's a problem, we might talk about Jesus and, you know, quote some scripture pertaining to whatever we're going through or whatever it might be. But that's it. That's it. That's as far as it goes, right? Never talk about him any other time. You know, over the years, the reason why and I'm not trying to lift myself up here, okay, please understand that. But over the years, uh, from MySpace back in 2005, 2006 to today, I'm still just as passionate, and I post a lot. Not just evangelism, not just stuff on false doctrine, just scripture, character of God, just all that you know, sort of thing. Nobody's interested. Nobody cares. You know, some people do. Um, I shouldn't say nobody, but you know, it's like very, very small number of people. And those people that do care are also people who talk about God a lot. <laughs> you know, in person too. Um, they're, they're not ashamed to talk about Jesus on their own fa personal Facebook. Um, usually the people that never say a word, you know, you talk to them in person, they, they also never say a word there too. You know, I can't tell you how many times, I'm getting, I'm getting kind of long right now, but uh, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to Christians in church after church um, Let's just use evangelism as an example. Can't tell you how many times that we, you know, talking to someone, you know, it's just a lighthearted conversation. And then I bring up the topic of evangelism. Yeah, you know, my friend Luke and I, we, you know, try to share the gospel, you know, doing whatever. I'm not speaking in a prideful way. I think it's pretty obvious when I'm talking to them. Uh, just when I'm passionate about sharing the gospel. And when I, I want to get others passionate too. I want others to come with us. And instantly, People are, are turned off. You can see it in their face right away. Look at these split. They want to change the subject. I'm going to share a story with you guys now that I'm talking about this. Uh, not. I don't want to say when it was, and I'm not going to give away the name of the church or any of that stuff, but um, I travel to a lot of churches. I, I you know, had fellowship with a lot of churches before, so... Um, yeah, you're not going to know which one I'm talking about, but some time ago, uh, after a service, the pastor was saying, hey, if you want prayer, you know, we got people, come on up. A lot of churches do that, okay? Again, you're not going to know which one it is. I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to disrespect this church or the person or whatever. So, yeah, so uh, 
I asked my daughter, I'm like, hey, what would you like prayer for? And you know what she said? I want prayer that the entire world would know Jesus. Back to bringing your kids when you go out and evangelize, especially during a parade event, number one, they want to help you. Number two, that is a humongous testimony. You know, you as a parent, you take that seriously. They see that, you pass that passion on to them. Trust me. Big time, humongous trust me on that one, okay? Talk about this a lot. It doesn't seem like anyone cares. But anyway, so that was a cute moment. Um, so, yeah, she said that, and I'm like, okay, let's go up and get some prayer. So we went up, and we spoke to one of the guys. I don't know if it's the outer or who it was, but uh, it wasn't the pastor. It was just, you know, some other guy. And uh, so I said, okay, this is what I, – I, I told him the story. Oh, yeah, I asked my daughter, you know, and she said she wants prayer that the entire world would know Jesus. And he's just gushing like, oh, man, that's the sweetest thing ever. Okay, and then he prays, and it's just, you know how people pray, and they use really big words, really pomp it up, you know. Um, you know, he's so excited that, yeah, this girl, she, she want, that's a great heart to have. Now, afterwards, I said something to the effect of, you know, it's kind of funny that she wanted prayer for that, because... Later on today, we're going to be at such and such an event sharing the gospel. And right away, I got that same exact look that I've gotten so many times before when you tell someone that you do evangelism and share the gospel. And no, I didn't tell this guy what method that we use. I didn't say that we, you know, we're one of those guys who stand up on the soapbox just yelling and screaming at people. We don't do that. I didn't say that we did that. And right away, his countenance did a 180. When minutes ago, he was so excited to hear the passion of someone, you know, young anyway. I guess it's only cute when they're young, when they say that they want to share the gospel. But when you're older, then, nope, it's, it's creepy when you want to share the gospel as a Christian. I don't understand that, but that's, trust me, I've seen it hundreds of times. Um, yeah, that was so telling. But yet... Not surprising, because that parallels what I've seen over the years, ever since I got saved. That's what I've seen, and nothing's changed. And what I try to do, guys, I'm trying to encourage people to get excited about sharing the gospel. That's why I always talk about parade events. I want to get back to that. Because um, it's super easy. Anybody can do it. And unless you're laid up and you, you can't walk, anybody can do it. I don't care what you think, you know. I don't know why, what, what it is that you might be thinking of why you can't do that. Again, not trying to twist your arm, not trying to push this on you. Please understand that, okay? If you don't want to do it, that's cool, all right? Trust me. I'm just saying, like, of the hundreds and hundreds of, hundreds and hundreds of, uh, you know, people who say that they're Christian in this area, there's not anybody new that can come out, just one person. Not one person. I mean, come on. Come on, guys. There's got to be somebody out there. I would love to have you, okay? I know I'm kind of speaking in a, like, negative-ish tone or whatever. But, you know, it is frustrating, all that I've seen. And I want the church to succeed, okay? That's why it's so frustrating, and I want souls to be saved. You know, do, do you have a heart for the Lord? You do realize that people are going to die and go to hell. You're, you're, some of your best friends, your family members that you say that you love, you do realize you're going to hell, right? Don't you want to start equipping yourselves and getting yourself familiar with sharing the gospel? That's what parades can do. Not just parades, but that's just one thing. Again, super easy way to get the gospel out to hundreds of people, maybe even a thousand people if you walk quick enough. <laughs> um it's easy, guys. I, I don't know how to pump this thing up anymore. Going for a walk, hundreds of people winding up the streets. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Boom, 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 boom. That's exactly what it's like, guys. And uh, we could definitely use the help. I want to saturate the gospel message of Jesus Christ in northeastern Wisconsin. 
That's exciting. Aren't you guys excited about that? The gospel is going out. It doesn't matter, guys. You might think that, oh, well, this is what really bothers me when people say things like, oh, people are just going to throw it away anyway. Oh, man, there's so much, like I said, there's so much wrong with it. You're going to forget some things. Guys, most of them are still going to read the gospel message. I mean, in order for it to be a success, how many people have to get saved? I would love an answer to that. You can be a Jeremiah. Remember him? 40 years and not a single convert. What about Noah? It says that he was a preacher of righteousness, right? And they say that was like 120 years before, um, you know, since the time he got uh, the revelation about the flood to the actual flood. He had all that time preaching. Did anybody get saved? No. That's what. That's a huge problem when you start looking at, res, you know, results. I really, it really bothers me when people say, like, oh, how effective is that when they, you know, are talking to me about uh, some event that we do or whatever. How effective is doing a parade event? Now, they probably aren't asking it in any wrong motive. You know, maybe they don't realize how they're wording it. Um, and I'm really <laughs> sort of confused on how to answer that question when I'm asked that sometimes because, like, what do you mean by results? I don't really understand. You don't want to come off as, like, you know, offensive or anything like that either. Um, it's just an odd question. You know, if, if you're someone, just don't ask it in that way. Try to rephrase the question. How? I'm not really sure, but just try to rephrase that question. Um, but anyway, so I've been talking locally. If you guys want to come out and do a parade event, I would love to have you if you can help out anywhere, especially if you're new. Last year was a presidential campaign, and uh, Donald Trump's thing was make America great again. Not trying to you know support or not support Donald Trump. That's not what that's about. But stealing that phrase, uh, make America great again, I kind of took the phrase make evangelism great again. That's what I'm trying to do. And what do I mean by that? By making you know, getting people passionate again. We've lost that in the church, you guys. We have lost that. I don't care how much the pastor talks about it in such a great message, and they are great messages. We nod our head in agreement to it, but we're not following through, okay? We're not. Now, some of you might be like, oh, well, Kurt, and this happens a lot, you guys. When I start talking about this, that we could definitely use more people sharing the gospel, people are all of a sudden like, well, Kurt, not everybody does it that way. <laughs> that just shows you my frustration when you know when people say that. And then you look at the comments uh, or the likes of that comment. People that never talk to you otherwise, never comment, never like, you know, when you even when you say that you need prayer because you're going to share the gospel, nobody cares. But when somebody says, well, Kurt, come on, you know, not everybody does it that way. <laughs> oh, man. It's like a million things I can say to that. It just it shows me that where their hearts are at. You know. My palm is not big enough, nor my forehead big enough for the face palm that deserves. Not trying to be mocking, guys. I, I weep over the condition of the church over the years. Um, you know, even when I see stuff like this, it's just, it's sad. What I've ex been experiencing, I'm, you know, I shouldn't talk about this, but my old church, what's going on over there is sad. Especially in the, in the realm of evangelism. It's just sad. They had two people, myself and the friend, super passionate about evangelism, leave, and nobody cares. And we've been trying for years to, to equip them. We got nothing but just being bashed and, you know, falsely being accused of, oh, Kurt, well, you're only promoting your way of doing things. And, you know, like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I've corrected that how many times? And you still 
say that. I mean, it's just getting sad. But, you know, again, you know, I'll post something and people will say, like, oh, well, that's just your way. You know, and you get people that never, ever, 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 ever like. And I'm not, and I'm not all about likes. Please understand. But that shows me, oh, people are reading my post about evangelism. You know, when I'm asking for prayer or whatever, or asking people to come up, people are reading that. But when somebody shows any, any um, negativity in any way, then they like that comment. It just shows me, oh, okay. So <laughs> now I know who's, okay, I'm sorry. But it's just sad. It's just really sad. You know, I've been talking about this for the last couple of years now, but the body of Christ is so disjoined. There's no, none of that connectivity in it. You know, I've been working, you know, towards evangelism, you know, since 2005. Specifically, it's a long story. 2005 is when I learned uh, the Ray Comfort stuff um, through a prayer walk, a guy named Jim Paul Seen. Um, I shared this story many times before. Awesome man of God. He was the closest thing I've, I've had to a mentor. You know, I've gone, I went to one church for three years and one other church for 10 years. I've never really had somebody like that. Um, and now I'm going to a different church. But um, in all those years, though, nobody shared with me how to share the gospel. People, everybody knew I was passionate. So I was on my own. Let's just say 2005 to 2013. I was on my own for eight whopping years doing my own thing. How much more effective could it have been if I knew other Christians who were just passionate? Now they are, they were out there, just so scattered. And those guys oftentimes are working on their own too. They're not working a part of the body. The Bible talks about, about that a lot, being part of the body. Um, they, they understand. I mean, it's <laughs> when we talk, when we have our time of fellowship before or after, even sometimes during some kind of an outreach. You know, it's it's sad. It's kind of warming in the sense that we have someone to share this stuff with. But we're kind of like the outcast of the church. Not in every case, please understand, but you know, that's how I felt for many years. You know, in 2013, I finally met some belie other believers who were into evangelism. Um, not from the Manitowoc area. I mean, eventually it from the Manitowoc area, yeah, but if I met some, oh, there's a couple guys in Fond du Lac, a couple guys over here, a couple guys there. Well, I, I should say Manitowoc if you count Trevor and Casey because they were living here at that time, but they're from Green Bay. But um, And then eventually I met the Conans, and uh, I met the people at Berean Fellowship. Like, everybody shares the, sharing the gospel there. You know, I, I know I talk highly about them, but that's just awesome. You know, I, I believe that they do things very awesome like that place. But um, what was I going to say? There's like a bunch of things I probably could say. It's already at 46 minutes. I got to get to bed. Nobody's going to watch this for that long. Maybe like if anybody watches this for, you know, the whole 46 minutes up until now, I can think of like two, maybe three people that might. And, yeah, <laughs> they're not going to be those people that like those negative comments. Trust me on that one. Um Oh, man. But I've been through so much with just the church being dispassionate about evangelism. Um, make evangelism great again. I try to do that. Been trying to do that. People say, well, Kurt, I know you're frustrated, but you just have to lead by example, and people will start to foul. Nah. I'm sorry, but no, that's not true. Been doing this now for a long time. Um, I don't exactly see hordes of people. No, no, it's just not very really true. I mean, if, if I mean, in some cases, yeah, that encourages others. Um, yeah, in that way. But you know, people who are already passionate about the gospel message already now, you know, they see what I needed is somebody to uh, go with and share the gospel. And I finally met. Um, some people in 2013, um, I went out with, with brothers in the Lord who were into evangelism. 
I got to see it firsthand. I mean, I've I've watched stuff on online, uh, the way of the master show and things like that. But I really needed to be with my family. I really needed the body of Christ to go with. Whopping eight years, man, how things could have been different if, if churches actually equipped the saints for the work of the ministry per Ephesians 4 in the area of, the, of evangelism. How much, how many more people would have heard the gospel since 2005 when I first started really learning how to share the gospel? I was passionate about evangelism even before that, but that's when I really uh, found some good um, content, some good lessons, because there's nobody else mentoring me. So, um, where would I have been today? What about you? Whoever's watching this, I'm sure the only people that are watching this far are already passionate about evangelism in some way. Um, if by chance, by the grace of God, somebody else is watching who maybe not isn't big into sharing the gospel or whatever, um, what about you? In five years from now, what do you see yourself when it comes to obeying that aspect of your Christian walk, sharing the gospel message? Your loved ones, you know, do you see yourself ever sharing with them or whatever, you know, people, strangers even? I, I believe that once we come to the end of our lives, it's going to be kind of a sad smack in the face for many of us. Looking back, man, I could have done so much more, but I wasted it on earthly things. I'm not saying all earthly pursuits are bad, you know, sports, um, some hobby or whatever. I have hobbies. I'm not going to shame in that. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, but um, I can go on a big thing about that. But where do you see yourself? Wouldn't you like to know, start learning how to share the gospel now, start becoming passionate now? Um, it's been well said. How does it go? Um, if Christianity were to become illegal, is there enough evidence to prove your guilt? Or will it be a hung jury or something like that? Um, actually, that wasn't the... That's not really what I wanted to go to. I wanted to say, like, uh, well, there's probably a couple of examples I could use. Um, let's say that you know somebody who's, well, nah, let's just skip all that. It's getting late. Um, so parade events, I'm talking locally. Guys, if there's anybody out there who's not local watching this, by the grace of God, 50 minutes you know, listening to some person like me, I'm not that interesting. <laughs> Um, if you want to do a parade event in your area and you live in some other state, if you want me to, I'll buy you or send you a hundred gospel tracks, the million dollar bill or whatever track you want. Um, just, just a trial, just handle that. Say there's two people. It'll take you guys three minutes, four minutes, five, maybe five minutes of walking and hanging out tracks, take 50 each person, you'll be done, like I said, about five minutes. You'll be done. Just, just to try it out, just to see how easy it is. Okay? Why not give it? Thank you, Bajoran, while we can. We're going to stop you. What am I supposed to do with that? Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear her come down. I can't help you that. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to get going, so um, got some stuff to do. But, guys, if you want to do a parade in a different city, different state, contact me. I'll send you something, you know, unless you have something already. But I just encourage you, again, not trying to be legalistic. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. Um, I just think it's a great idea. And, you know, part a lot of this video I know is kind of ranting about a lot of the negativity about evangelism. Parade events or otherwise. So, yeah. I'm going to get going. So, God bless you guys. Sorry again if it came off a little bit uh, on the harsher side. Or harsher side. 
I don't know. I'm tired. I gotta get to bed. So God bless you guys and uh